in the late 1980s, the Concorde made a rare visit to Sydney. It is a prime example of the power produced by four Rolls-Royce Olympus twin-spooled turbojet engines. Our dream was to make a simple backyard jet which demonstrated the principles of a gas turbine engine. The Rolls-Royce Olympus was obviously too complex to recreate. It was produced in a joint venture between France and England. In the 1960s, it was state-of-the-art engineering. Often, jets have represented the simple illustrations. These do convey the simplicity of the theory. In reality, the engineering complexity is best shown in the 747 engine cutaway. This is not a Rolls-Royce Olympus. It was our first attempt at a backyard jet. I had an old turbocharger from a large piston engine and my school friend Carl had various bits and pieces to assemble the first jet. Although far from being a success, it relied on compressed air and was fueled by gas. Our first starting system did not have the required speed to spool the turbine. The combustion chamber was inefficient and most of the fuel burned behind the exhaust turbine. Okay. As night fell, our attempts did nothing to forward the theory, but it did burn a substantial area of grass and destroyed some backyard shrubs. Armed with Carl's new starting system, pressurised kerosene fuel supply, large combustion chamber and oil supply, our second backyard jet was showing much more potential than the first attempt. Like the first attempt, it was made from scrap parts, old car exhaust, tin cans, vacuum cleaner hose. The starting was sometimes noisy and dangerous. The starting sequence often produced large amounts of flame and there was no valve to control the amount of pressurised kerosene. It was either full throttle or nothing. Carl's starter was a drill running through another drill's gearbox. It had no trouble spooling the turbine to a higher speed. Often the oil would leak into the turbine and produce neighbour loving acrid smoke. Back then, neighbours did not mind a little jet noise. Remember, it was the late 1980s. This next run shows the jet sustaining itself. With a successful run recorded the tape, it was time to let the turbine rest. It would be 12 years until our next backyard jet. Well, it's on while it lasted. Just put some roller bands in it and get it going. The Rolls-Royce Derwent could be described as a classic gas turbine engine. It was developed from the Whittle W2B engine, 
when Rolls-Royce took over the project in 1943. This engine was fitted to the Gloucester Meteor. The Derwent is a very simple engine. It uses a single stage, double sided centrifugal compressor which feeds nine combustion chambers. Carl was adding the turbine oil for lubrication into the large onboard oil tank. And the engine has three main bearings fed by two scavenge pumps and a pressure pump. This engine is being started for the first time after a prolonged storage period in England. Overall it is in a remarkable condition considering the age of the engine. Two truck batteries are required for starting. Also a 200 litre drum of jet fuel is plumbed into the engine. A bank of solenoids are needed to activate the electrical components on the engine. The starting sequence, unknown to us at the time, has a particular order. Without the correct starting sequence, the engine will not ignite the fuel pumped into the combustion chambers. Thus it will pour out the exhaust. The throttle consists of a simple metal valve. One mystery to us at the time was the throttle settings. It was not known where the idle or full throttle was on the small throttle arm. Carl is toggling the throttle to try to establish the idle setting. Shall we go again? The first start was made with no engine instrumentation. Carl later made a custom starting panel. On the third attempt, with the correct starting sequence, the engine started. Once started, it is a spectacular engine, being noisy, smelly, and in the exhaust area, hot and very nauseating. The heat being generated in the exhaust was substantial. Fuel consumption of the Rolls-Royce Derwent is at idle 90 litres per hour and at full throttle 2,500 litres per hour. The noise being produced by the running engine echoed up through the valley, attracting local residents who thought a helicopter or jet had crashed. Well, I've got to say, it's one of the loudest things I've ever heard. The internet became a vital tool, enabling Carl to gather all the vital information about the engine. On another run, the engine displayed a brief moment of the power of the gas turbine. It easily stripped two large pieces of concrete curbing and a considerable area of grass. These engines were used in England to clear snow and ice from airport runways. It is easy to say the Rolls-Royce Derwent is the ultimate backyard jet.